I'm really happy that today we're joined by four professionals from different backgrounds. Coming from the European Parliament, uh, joining online is Maria Spiraki. She has been a member of the European Parliament since 2014, representing the EP's Neo Democratia Party. Ms. Spiraki sits in the Parliamentary Committee on Industry, Research and Energy. And she also has extensive prior experience as a journalist. Maria, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. We're also joined by Jurki Katainen, the current president of CITRA, the Finnish Innovation Fund. Jurki Katainen served as vice president of the European Commission from 2014 to 2019. And also he was prime minister of Finland from 2011 to 2014. Mr. Katainen, thank you for joining us. It's okay. a pleasure. Uh, Maria, I think that now everything's okay with the connection and uh, the floor is yours. Well, thank you. And before I start, I would like to share with you the thoughts that I have having the, the presence of Vice President Katainen, of former Vice President. It is an honor for us to have him here in the panel. He is a leader in terms of circular economy and he's also the initiator of a very emblematic piece of legislation, the Single-Use Plastic Directive. Talking about thorny issues and, and difficult topics, how important is the agricultural sector when we talk about the, the Green Deal? And is this a bottleneck for, for the Commission, for the Parliament, given so many interests involved in the common agricultural policy and the whole agricultural sector? Yes, it is a very difficult question. We have to engage our agricultural sector to, to the Green Deal. And we have to provide also technical assistance to, 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 to our people. But the case is that we now have the roadmap, and the roadmap is from farm to fork strategy, and it is also the new cap. So it is important to ensure sustainable food production. It is important to ensure sustainability to all levels of production in our food value chain. It is also important not to get into details, but it is a part of the, of the, of the national legislation and it is a part of national competence. And uh, allow me to, to, to give just a very, a very quick example. It is important to, 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 to follow also the new strategies that they are now providing new tools, like the methane strategy, which is uh, giving the, the agricultural sector an opportunity to, to use renewable energy and investing in biogas production from agricultural waste and uh, residues. My uh, last... Um... Uh, remarks um, will come from my, our colleagues or the other panelists' uh, opinions. First, I would like to build on what Maria said about the agriculture. Uh, I'm quite optimistic with agriculture uh, in the future because farmers can be and they will be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Because uh, carbon farming, for instance, uh, producing more carbon sinks and um, combining this effort to circular bioeconomy is a new opportunity for farming society. Maria, how do you respond to, th to these uh, concerns? I will start with the, the, last, uh, the last sentence of Vice President Katainen telling that uh, we have uh, the opportunity to, to set up the global standards starting with uh, the implementation of uh, our trade agreements, uh, for example, the Mercosur, by providing the, the precondition that uh, if the, the, the members of Mercosur are not implementing the Paris Agreement targets, that, then they, we cannot import goods from, from, from our side. But it is important to understand that uh, there is no alternative for us. We have to go forward by setting global standards, by meeting the new needs of the people, by addressing the concerns of the people. And in this regard, I think that we are ready. We are ready in terms of legislation. We need more political will uh, by implementing the legislation in terms of, of regional and member states level. We need also uh, enough and proper funding. And in this regard, we need further engagement of the part of the, of the, of the private sector by providing fi private sector not also stability, but also uh, predictability in the, in the uh, environment of, uh, of investments. And uh, the third one is the, the way that we will, uh, we will do it. Well, we can do it by engaging all stakeholders, not only industry, but also SMEs, not only consumers, but also students not only politicians, but also academia. It is important to understand that it is the case for our generation and we have to go ahead. 
Uh, Telmo just told us that there's going to be winners and losers from the European Green Deal. Let's get a bit political on this one. And Maria, I'm, I'm looking at you. Um, because of these these potential losers and winners, do you see political divisions? I mean, we've seen political divisions um, ac across the EU, especially on geographical lines when we talk about the Green Deal, East versus West, North versus South. Do you see any major problems in the next couple of months? And I think this is the, the division that we have to avoid. According to my approach, I think that it is to start adapting best practices and exchanging views in order to, to avoid the division. Because as you have already mentioned, the case of uh, decarbonization, especially in regions that they, are, that they are lacking behind, is very important. In Greece, we have two of them. It is the Western Macedonia and Megalopolis in, in Peloponnesus. And it is important now to, to, to act very, very fast and to speed up in order to to meet the targets that we have already set by closing the by shutting down the the uh, the midnight plants by 2024 so we are for front runners but at the same time we need first best practices second technical assistance the 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 just transition mechanism is also providing technical assistance but we need more we need a detailed assistance in order to, to, to speed up. And third, of course, we need uh, much more funding. Not additional funding coming, coming from the MFF, but the, the additionality that we can provide by using MFF, by using the Just Transition Fund, and by using also the involvement of the private sector. So, yes, the danger is existing, and it is here. Vice President Katainen comes from Finland. Finland is, uh, allow me to say, zero-waste economy, if I am correct. In Greece, we are landfilling 80%, 80% approximately of our waste. We have to change our model. We have to change our behavior. We have to adapt as soon as possible, extended producer responsibility schemes. We have to incentivize uh, the, the private sector in order to invest for, for specific industry in terms of, uh, of regaining uh, not only the, the critical raw materials, but also all kinds of materials that we have available and also to, to go from, from waste to energy. This is of paramount importance. We have to, to demonstrate, we have to provide to the, to the member states that they are lacking an alternative roadmap. And this roadmap is at a general level, at a wide level, at the EU level, the Green Deal. But we need also to specify, to give it them a roadmap that it, it is fit and proper to, to, to their needs. If I look into the European Council conclusions, the recent ones from October, because we know there will be a debate on climate goals, climate targets in December by the leaders, you know, these targets should be delivered collectively and taking into account national circumstances or differences. And this goes very much to the point made by Maria and, and Mark, which has to do with we cannot look at this Green Deal as just one big project that should be applied with one size fits all approach. We need to do our homework and we need to remember that the European Green Deal is not only about targets, it's about restructuring of our economies, it's about transforming our member states.